Evening everyone, I hope you're all okay. So it's Sunday afternoon, evening, and I've had a pretty relaxed day. It's probably the first day I haven't done something, been out doing something in the garden or something indoors. Uh, put this dressing gown on that Charlotte got me for Christmas, first time that I've worn it. And I, I decided to have a really chilled out Sunday. I watched the briefing at four o'clock and we're just over a week now into the, the lockdown, which was going to be reviewed at week three. And there was talk that this could go on for a little bit longer, but we should expect the social distancing to be in effect for some time. We're talking six, maybe nine months. And even though some form of day-to-day -day business will be able to resume we're all going to have to think of how we run our businesses or how we work or how we trade or how we work in our jobs in a different way and i have already done a video about the opportunities that this crisis and the new world that we're going to be entering is going to create a, a thing like commercial property. Do check that out. And in that in that video, I talk about how some of the bigger companies are going to recognise the cost saving and the efficiency of people uh, when they're working from virtual offices or from home or in smaller offices or in different locations. And coming back to this evening, I, like I said, I've had a pretty chill that day. It's been nice, but I don't think I could do it. I'm definitely not going to do it tomorrow. I definitely don't think I could do something similar for. for some time and I'm sure there are many people, especially property people, or entrepreneurs or some other types of people that probably hear me loud and clear and think the same. There's only so much of this that we're going to be able to really take and there's only so much work around the house you can do. So we've got to think about how we can push our business into a new way of how it can run so it can start to not only survive but should I, do I dare say it, thrive in a new world or a new way of working for the foreseeable future. And I can't speak for lots of different types of businesses. I don't have the experience in running multiple um, businesses in different sectors. But what I can do is tell you about how I think as a property investor or developer that this can now start to take shape so you can take advantage of, don't get me wrong, the short term opportunities, but also the longer term um, running of your portfolio or finding and running development deals. Now, I've always been a big fan of being very hands off and letting the professionals in whatever sector that you need for whatever project to take take control and, and take things forward. And I think that's going to be even more essential in what is going to be the new world. And um, if you take even the process of trying to find a new deal. I'm not a big fan of these off markets, leaflet dropping. I just don't really think that it's um, a viable, sustainable strategy to build multiple purchases at any one given time. Don't get me wrong, if you drop a thousand leaflets every week for a year, I'm sure you'll pick up one or two great deals. Um, I have picked up some pretty good deals in the past this way, but the amount of effort and time and the deals that it returned, it just wasn't very sustainable. And it definitely didn't bring me a great volume of good deals. So my view has always been to work with estate agents and judge what's on the market and go to the vendors and also get out there and network, get your name out there and people will bring you deals. And I think between the two of people bringing you deals, other professionals, housing associations, builders, whatever, and the estate agent right move type market, you're going to be hitting 90, 95% of, of potential deals. And I've said this till I'm blue in the face for, the, for years now, that some of the best deals are the ones that are sat there on the market in plain sight, maybe advertised for more money than they're worth, and they're not getting any traction. And those are the ones that are, you know, you could be targeting. And in this sort of way of working where social distancing is going to be something that's going to be here definitely for the short to medium term, how can you take that forward through to a deal that you can buy and judge how you can refurbish it? And I'm not saying I've done this, but one of the things I am considering, should I be offered a deal that I can't go and see, I will be asking for video footage, pictures, floor plans, very simple standard stuff. Some of the stuff we've already got access to on Rightmove. But equally, I'll be asking tradespeople to go there on my behalf and tell me what they think 
and I start to build a picture, not just from the sale agent's point of view, not even from the vendor's point of view, but also from a tradesperson view. Then you need to recognize that there's not going to be the amount of lenders out there in the market and the ones that are still there, you can, you can bet that we're gonna see a shift in the products. Definitely those higher loan to value products, the 80, 85%, which really do have their place, especially for below market value properties when you buy a multiple ones, it's nice to not tie up too much cash flow on the purchase because you're going to refinance it after the refurb anyway. One of my favorite products are the bridge to let products. They're great because they, they allow you to buy, refurbish and flip within six months. So you don't have to pay second lots of fees and things like that. But we are seeing those products being removed from the market. So it doesn't mean that we should stop looking and buying deals. It just means that we need to be more savvy about how we approach the deal. If we can go and view it, great. But if we can't, don't necessarily turn your back on the deal just find other ways to to understand how you can work with that deal buying properties in locations that you're familiar with and where you already have properties is also going to be a huge benefit and taking it to the next level buying properties very similar if not identical to the ones that you already have i really like ex local authorities 1950 1955s in one geographical location i could literally buy properties just by seeing the address. I wouldn't even need to see pictures because I'm pretty confident about what I'm buying. I'm pretty content about what we have to spend and what we need to do to these types of properties. And some will be in better conditions than others, but if you are familiar with uh, the worst types of those properties, then you know what's going to be the worst and best case scenario in terms of spend and refurb and time and, and all of those things. So it's not going to be easy, but it's not going to be impossible. And if you stick to some key rules about locations and types of properties and lenders and trusted tradespeople, you could all of a sudden start to build a pretty good treasure chest of things to take things and purchases forward without even necessarily having to view them and not having to worry too much about the unknown. Equally, do I think that there's going to be a shift in tenant supply sector of markets? Yes, there is. I think, are we gonna see the spike of serviced accommodations being converted and taken forward on rent to rents? I think the answer is likely no. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because we, the market was potentially getting a little bit saturated. The good operators, like any market, like any sector, like any business, the good operators will survive and the ones who aren't so good will maybe go and do something else. We saw it a few years ago with professional HMOs. It was definitely the flavor of the month. Everyone seemed to jump on the bandwagon and all of a sudden the reality of the net result versus the headline figures started to take place and transpire and people started to exit that market. So the other point is, is markets. So I think we've all had a bit of a wake up call that it's not necessarily things like banks and legislation or even consumer demand that can impact the market. It can be things like pandemics and, and what else is there in, in the world that could have impacts on financial markets, property markets, and all of these various things. I think the honest answer is no one knows and there may never be anything else like this, but there'll be some people out there who are definitely feeling a lot more comfortable than other people. And the reason people will be feeling comfortable and content is because they'll understand that even if there is a dip in prices, if there is a shortage of demand um, for tenants in their sector, they're confident they can ride the wave because one, their exposure in terms of types of properties or too many eggs in one basket is probably the right word in, is, is quite low and their gearing on some properties won't be so high. So that means mortgage payments tend to be lower and their need for a fixed amount of income to come in is going to be lower. So I was just thinking about doing a video and, and getting it edited and, and making it quite a big impactful a video. And I decided not to, I decided to give a really chilled, another unedited video on a Sunday evening, put my steer on it based on today and what I've seen on the news to really hit home. I mean, I, I hate to call out names and other people because I don't like to bad mouth or even comment negatively on anyone. And this isn't a negative comment, but I have seen Grant Cardone hit this market over the last two years and his philosophy of 10x everything 
I'm very sure is now starting to see some cracks appear. And I did see some articles about the amount of employees that he's had to reduce and, and, and who hasn't in this market. But what is 10X? What is making everything scale, scalable and, and big? What is the point? And I've definitely gone through a full circle because I started off in property and I grew very quickly and we then started 10X and everything. And we had some huge developments going on and we had multiple projects at any one given time. And it felt really great and it was great when we had like 17 projects on at any given time and we were making loads of money and buying loads of properties and working with loads of investors but it became more than a full-time job I was running a massive company and um, there's a lot to be said about when you go full circle and you come back to the realization that you've hit all of your targets you've achieved all of your goals you've you've set out to achieve some big dreams and you've done it and when you've done that you can start to try and jump onto the next big thing or grow and 10x things or whatever. But if you can start to just keep things a little bit smaller, a little less numbers, a little less volume, but more quality and plan for the long term and try and have a bit of a buffer for when things go wrong, like they have done recently. And you'll feel quite content Sometimes you will get this entrepreneurial, should I start really pushing this forward again? Should I start buying five, 10, 15 properties a month again? But when we see a correction, your plan of not going crazy and doing loads of volumes and tying up too much cash pays dividends, more so than, than any deal. And it pays in many different ways, not just your financial security, not just you, your mentality of being quite comfortable, but but also the reassurance that you had a plan and you stuck to it. And I'm not saying that that was my plan completely, um, but and I'm not saying anything to brag, or I'm, I'm trying to give a quite a humble message here. And I'm trying to warn really, anyone, especially younger guys, sort of 35 and under, where you may be just starting out or you're a few years in and you see and you watch these videos or these conferences and people very rarely talk about being content, being comfortable and not having huge amounts of stress. You never see divide 10, you see times 10, 10x. And I, I remember a story where someone once told me they were trying to buy a uh, um, an, a, an island off of a, a tribe, and uh, the, the head of the tribe talked about that he doesn't want to sell the land, and the, and the guys in the suits who were turning up trying to buy this island or this bit of land, whatever it was, they were like, "Look, we're offering you tens of millions of pounds. You'll be really rich." And the guy just sat there and he said, "Well, what am I going to do when I'm really, really rich?" And they said, "Well, you'll be able to buy wherever you want to live." And he says, "Yeah, then what?" And they said, well, then you'll be able to provide for all of your family. And he said, well, live what? He said, well, you'll be able to um, do whatever you want during the day. And then the guy said, yeah, but then what? And he said, well, you can just, you can, you can start to think about retiring. And the guy said, well, you've just described my whole life. So why do I need to sell my home to get what I've already got? And do you know what? I'm sure the story was far more slicker and personable than I've just said in my group 30 seconds. But the guy has a point. When you set your goals and your dreams and you achieve them, you, and, I, and I say this with a really sort of, I don't know, like little person on my shoulder saying, you know, but you want to go for bigger and better things, which, which I do, but you must recognize where you are and the comfort and the security level of what you've achieved and and be happy with that. And in my view, I don't think 10X is a very good idea. I think having a big business is great, but you ask anyone at the helm or involved in a massive business that is either making loads of money or loads of projects going on or, or whatever. And you ask them where they would rather be. And I'm pretty sure a high percentage would be where the guy was, the guy, the landowner. Um, so on that, when we're talking about the new market and the new way of doing things in this new social distancing type of world that we're gonna have to adapt to over the next six to nine months, I, I really do think that you'll see a shift from property investors, whereby they'll start to do less, but more quality, and they'll be more great results being achieved off the back of that, but albeit on a smaller scale. And I, and, I, and I think the message I'm trying to get here, 
get out here is really the, those guys looking to start those guys on their journey upwards don't necessarily think you've got to hit it 100 miles an hour and don't necessarily think you've got to do loads of multiple deals and put yourself under so much pressure and stress and financial pressure just to achieve those goals. It's sometimes better to do things slower, not 10 exit, and the results that we get on a smaller number of deals will be better quality and, and higher and higher margin deals. But that's it from me, guys. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all staying sane, and I'll catch you all in the next video. See you soon.